Thank you, everybody. Um, I just want to kind of, I suppose, tell you a little bit about myself and who I am. I come from inner city Dublin, a place called Charlemagne Street, uh, a place that when I was growing up, which was many years ago, uh, was very working class. And in actual fact, Charlemagne Street in the old days were all tenement houses. So there was a lot of poverty in inner city Dublin when I was growing up. Um, I came from a family of, I was the youngest of five children, and my problem, I do believe to this day, was that I was never great in school, okay? So I, I actually, even though I never got tested or anything like that, I did think I have some kind of, um, you know, dys dyslexia or something like that, because I really, really couldn't get my, as, as much as I had tried, I couldn't get my head around a lot of stuff in school. And I'm going to jump a little bit because by the time, you know, I was in my 20s, um, I, was, I had been married with two children, separated. Um, and it was then, I suppose, when the marriage broke up, when I was in, it was early 20s, actually. I was about 24 at the time. Uh, my marriage broke up. And it was then that I, I suppose, became a little bit dependent on alcohol. So I used alcohol I suppose, for like a little companion. I was on my own. I, I was living in this one room flat with two children. And at night time when the kids went to bed, I'd have a little bottle of wine for myself if I could afford it. And that would only be maybe once a week or twice a week. In, in hindsight, I realized quite soon that I had a problem. Now I'm going to jump again. So I decided I would go and get help and I discovered when I talked to uh, a counsellor that they, they told me that I had a serious problem with alcohol and that I needed to stop and that I had to go and do a programme, okay? So I went and I did a programme in a, in a place called Stanhope Street. Um, and Stanhope Street was fantastic. I did the year-long programme and I stopped drinking and it was life-changing, life-changing for me. Because shortly after that, I was asked to join, would you believe, a band I traveled around America um, maybe once or twice a year. I did a lot of gigs in Ireland. Shortly after that, I was offered a record deal, a solo record deal, where I, um, I made an album. Now, this is back in the 90s, so this is now way, 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 way beyond your, your time. I know you're all very, very young. So this is back in the mid-90s. And that album went to, to number one for me in Ireland for 10 weeks. Life was great. Life was absolutely brilliant. And, you know, I, 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 I started to live a life beyond my wildest dreams. In a way, though somewhere in it all, somewhere there was this little voice in my head, even though, you know, I had stopped drinking and my career took off and I was singing to, you know, 1,000, 2,000 seizure venues. I think the biggest audience I played to was 12,000 people in, in, in America. I traveled all over America. I traveled all over uh, England. I traveled all over Europe. So I was traveling all around the world, and, and life was great. But somewhere in my head, I kept thinking, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this, and people are going to realize that I'm not really that good. So I knew that there was something not quite right. But somewhere in my head, I was still feeling that I wasn't good enough, which is, which is bizarre. And I couldn't get my head around why I was feeling this way. So I decided that I would go and s talk to somebody. And what, what I discovered really was that really, even though I became dependent on, on alcohol in my 20s, I realized that I suffered with depression. And I realized that I had to do something about it. So I embarked on a, on a journey of recovery for myself, which is what I did. And life started to get really good. So what that meant was I started to go and see a therapist. I started to understand what depression was. I started to talk about my feelings. I started to talk about maybe my anxiety around why I felt the way I felt. And I started to get an understanding of it all. So in the early 2000s, my mother passed away. And my mother was a great, really, really, she was an amazing woman. She came from the Liberties. She was a phenomenally strong woman, and I knew in her life times were hard, but she always kept going, and she always made sure there was food on the table for all of us kids. 
And when she passed away, she left us all a small amount of money. Now, you have to understand, I'm still touring, I'm still gigging, I'm traveling around the world, but I wanted to do something to give back. I wanted to make her proud, even though she had passed. So I decided to go back to college because I'd left school when I was 16. And my daughter, um, who at the time was in her teenage years, just like yourselves, said, Mom, if you weren't singing, what would you have liked to have done? I'd love to have gone, gone back to, to college and I'd love to have studied to be a therapist. So she said, why don't you do it? So I thought, I couldn't. She said, I, in, in my head, I thought, oh my God, I'm not that bright. I wouldn't be able to go back to college. And she said, just try it. And she was the one that inspired me. So I went back to college and I studied to become an addiction therapist because I'm intrigued by the power that alcohol or drugs or gambling or whatever it might be, or even sometimes social media can have over us. So I went back to college. I studied to become an addiction therapist. I went to work in a treatment center in Dublin. All the while, I'm still singing and performing. And I loved working with those who were trying to get into recovery from addiction. But what I really, really connected with when I was in the, the Rutland Treatment Center, I, I started to work with family members, family members who had somebody they loved with an alcohol, with a drug problem, with a gambling problem. So I was dealing with mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, um, maybe children, young, I mean, adult children who would have parents who might have an alcohol problem. And I realized that family members who had somebody they loved with a problem with alcohol, drugs, or gambling were devastated. And they didn't know how to cope with watching their loved one going down that route of self-destruct. So I left the Rutland. So I set up a program just for that family member or the concerned person. And I set that up in 2009. And since 2009, it's been going from strength to strength to strength. What I mean by that is, we have at the moment two programs that are running, one in Dundalk and one in Dublin. And the one in Dublin has 24 family members. Now, I don't mean they're all from one family. I mean, they're all individual family members. So this program that we have for family members is, is a program where people come in, we, we give them, show them a lecture, and then we give them, it's all highly qualified therapists. Now, in this work that we do, we do it in Angel Street, in this work that we do, what we found and what I found is that when I went looking for funding, I found it very hard to get heard. So last year, uh, I decided to run politics <laughs> in all my madness. So I decided to run to go into the Shannon Darren, which is, and I didn't, to be honest with you, I really genuinely didn't expect to get elected because I just thought I'll run in the, sh in the campaign and I'll highlight the issues maybe by the media. So now I'm in the Shannon and I, again, I'm just incorporating my story with, I suppose, this passion that I have around uh, the impact on family and how alcohol, drugs or gambling or any other form of addiction can absolutely not only destroy the person that has the problem, but it also destroys the family. And the family can be absolutely devastated. And that's why I set up the Rise Foundation. I'm in the Shannon now, I'm constantly harassing people, harassing politicians, harassing ministers, and asking them we have to create awareness about this issue. Somebody has to be the voice of those who are very, very vulnerable. And I just need to say to you that if there is anybody out there who might have somebody in their lives that they're worried about, if there's someone out there that you might have a friend that you're worried about because of their drinking, and we, off, we know that sometimes depression can lead to people drinking you know, heavily or harmfully, um, and, and the reality is, is that alcohol only magnifies the depression. It actually makes it a million times worse because alcohol or drugs or, or anything like that is an actual depressant. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Talk to somebody. I mean, talk to so, uh, maybe a, a, an adult that you feel safe with. Talk to a teacher. 
talk to somebody in your life that you can go to. Make sure you ask them to keep it confidential because it is anything that you might say is sacred. You don't want it to get into unsafe hands, but please don't be afraid to ask for help. My life has changed dramatically since I stopped drinking. So now I'm in Shanadaran and I'm fighting for this really strong agenda that I'm so passionate about. I'm in there and I really, really want to make a difference. My life today has changed dramatically because I stopped drinking. I had to do a bit of work around the depression. Yes, I did, and I asked for help. And I have no shame in talking about it today. In fact, I'm quite proud of the fact that I had the courage to step into recovery. But it's really, really important that we keep ourselves healthy. We have to mind ourselves. We have to be really careful not to go down the route of dependency on alcohol, drugs, gambling, and be careful also of social media. That's all I would ask. Thank you for being such a lovely audience. Gurmina Mahathir.